Morning. All right. Good morning. This is referee Brian Nicholas with the Macomb County Family Court. And I'm here this morning on the case of Kaziaka versus Kaziaka, case number 2018-2919-D. And counsel, could you please state your appearance for the for the record? Yes. Good morning, I'm Jeffrey Salas appearing on behalf of the plaintiff, Jason Kaziaka, who appears via Zoom. All right. And sir, your name for the record? Jason Kaziaka. All right. I want to thank everybody for appearing via Zoom today. Uh, even though remote, uh, realize this is a legal proceeding, just as if you were here and present in the courtroom, Mr. Kaziaka. Any questions for myself or your attorney regarding that this is a legal proceeding today? No. All right. And just so you guys know, we're having some technical difficulties. If I start breaking up, um, please let me know because I won't know that. Um, I don't I don't see that or know that on my end. So guys, if you have any problem hearing me or if I'm breaking up, please interject and let me know. Um, I'm going to indicate that it is now 9.18 a.m. on Monday, August 14, 2023. This matter is scheduled for hearing on plaintiff's motion regarding custody and parenting time, and the defendant, Ms. Amanda Keziaka, has failed to appear. And counsel, your notice of hearing says that she was mailed a copy of this motion on July 31st. Is that correct? That's correct. We also attempted to have her personally served on, I believe it was three different occasions. She's evaded service. My understanding, and speaking okay. to my client, CPS has also tried to meet with her and she is refusing to do so. Every time somebody goes to the door, a different male individual answers saying that she is not present, even though we believe her vehicle was parked outside of the trailer. All right. I'm going to indicate we further sent email notice and my staff um, left a message on her uh, last phone number, uh, left with the front of the court and left a message on an answering machine. Um, she has not called back this office. However, I am going to note that on August 1st, 2023, the Honorable Terry Lynn Denning, Circuit Court Judge, entered a ex parte order placing the party's minor children in the care of plaintiff father, uh, pending the motion before the court today. You talked to Vera? No. Okay. Uh, and guys, if you wonder who I'm talking to, if you see the name Melanie on the screen, that is my secretary and court recorder. I just have her message over to the courtroom to make sure that Ms. Keziaki is not there or in their Zooming room. And we're, and if at any time we hear that during the course of this proceeding, I'll let you guys know and we'll wait for her appearance. Um, but we did just message the court to make sure she's not in the courthouse or in the judge's Zoom uh, waiting room. All right. So that being said, I'm going to find that service is valid. Um, and it is now 9.19 a.m. This matter was scheduled for hearing at 9 o'clock a.m. And again, the plaintiff has failed to appear, and we're about 20 minutes in here. So, counsel, if you'd like to proceed uh, with plaintiff's motion regarding custody and parenting time of the party's minor children. Yes, Your Honor. As I stated in the motion, this is not the first time we've been before the court on very similar issues regarding Ms. Kaziaka's drug use <laughs> uh, and failure to ensure that the children are protected while they're in her care. Uh, things have gotten worse uh, probably than they've been in the past. Uh, the, the party's daughter conveyed to my client and his fiance some rather alarming uh, instances that have occurred over the better part of the last month and a half prior to us filing the emergency motion. Uh, she also spoke to her counselor and disclosed the same, uh, the same incidents to her. Uh, CPS was contacted as a result. There is an ongoing investigation at the moment. There is a safety plan in place. Uh, in which they had advised Mr. Kaziaka not to return the children. Thankfully, Judge Dennings did enter that order, placing them in his temporary care uh, and suspending uh, Ms. Kaziaka's parenting time. Um, I can go through the various incidents if the court would like. I, I assume that you've read the motion. Um, there, there are troubling reports by the minor child regarding various male individuals who are in and out of uh, Ms. Kaziaka's trailer. Uh, it is not a large residence. She resides there with the two minor children. Uh, when they're in her care. Additionally, we believe her 19-year-old boyfriend resides in the, in the trailer, as well as two other individuals, uh, one, a Mr. Von Yorks, and another individual, I believe that we just know as uh, Corsten. Uh, there have been physical altercations between Ms. Kaziaka and the male residents of the trailer. Uh, the party's daughter was struck in the head by Mr. Richardson during an altercation a few weeks back. That is really what triggered all of this and finally allowed the minor child to report what has actually been going on in the trailer to Mr. Kaziaka. He obviously immediately took action in, in contacting CPS and in contacting me to file this motion. Um, there are multiple police reports to this residence, which I have provided to the court. I also provided a video recording Mr. Kaziaka took during one of the parenting time exchanges, uh, which was roughly 1230 in the afternoon. 
Uh, Ms. Kaziaka was apparently sleeping in the trailer at that time, never emerged, never woke up during the exchange. And if, as you can see from the video, there are mounds of clothing piled on top of each other throughout the trailer. You can't even walk around uh, without having to sidestep things or climb over uh, the various stacks of food and uh, toiletries, dishes, clothes, dog excrement. Uh, CPS, like I said, has been out to meet with her. Uh, they've been unsuccessful thus far. Uh, you know, Mr. Kaziaka has every reason to believe that she is again uh, using some of the police reports that we provided. You indicate that she was even stopped with a uh, meth pipe on her. Why the police didn't arrest her at that point, I don't know. They confiscated the pipe and sent her on her way. There have been multiple instances of domestic violence within the trailer. Um, and as uh, the court is aware, when we were here uh, two years ago, she admitted on the record, and I still to this day do not understand why Judge Swatolsky did not order her to test. She admitted on the record multiple times that she would fail a drug screen. Uh, and the court adjourned our motion out to review CPS documents, uh, medical records, the uh, synopsis of the child's counselor at that time. And during you know the roughly two months that uh, we had to adjourn the motion, she was able to at least stop using temporarily. Uh, that obviously uh, has changed. We do believe that she is once again using. Uh, the party's minor son has a, acknowledged that there is heavy smoking, both cigarettes and marijuana within the trailer. There's a court order that precludes her from smoking when the children are present. Um, and, and we believe that she is also, again, using methamphetamines. Um, so we're asking that the court uh, grant Mr. Kaziaka sole legal and physical custody, uh, that if the court feels it necessary, because it would be a change in custody, that it be referred to the friend of the court for an investigation and a recommendation. Uh, we don't believe that Ms. Kaziaka will appear. Mr. Um, Malkowitz was, I believe it was Malkowitz, was her prior attorney. Uh, he indicated that he is no longer representing her. He has not heard from her. Um, so we think that that she is pretty much given up at this point. All right. And correct me if I'm wrong, sir, your daughter's 11 and your son's 16? Correct. How long have they been with you? When did this whole matter start and how long have they been with you? July, mid-July, about. All right. So when it says this alleged incident occurred in mid-July, that's when they came to stay with you and they've not have you heard from their mom since they came to stay with you in mid-July? Uh, not since the Friday that I told her that there's a safety plan in place that I was going to be keeping them. And my son hasn't heard so she from didn't her. Get, she, didn't say, she didn't say return them. I'm going to file a complaint with the front of nothing. the court. I'm going to get nothing. them back. I'm going to call the police. Like nothing of that nature. No, nothing. Um, nothing. And was there I any kind of debate? That, no, no words really between you at all? What, what she was just the asked of that me why. She asked me why, and I told her there's a safety plan in place because the children are not safe at your home right now. All right. And, and included in these allegations are that these two males are pretty cavalier with states of undress in front of your children. One Correct. being that a male was nude from the waist down, another that um, your daughter came out of the bedroom, and another male companion was pleasuring himself on the living room couch and didn't Correct. Uh, deem her presence a reason to stop. Um, obviously, no allegations that they've directly attempted to harm the children, sure, but no. just this, this yeah. nudity in their presence and obviously an act on the couch without stopping could probably be deemed as. She does of, have um, abuse. some of the mother's other friends will stay in her bed while she's gone. And uh, she walked in on her mother's friend and his girlfriend the day I took her back to pick up her laptop for school. And they were in laying in her bed, you know, naked from the waist up from what she okay. said. And, that's also and why do you think, okay. I, I, okay. And why do you think she's using meth again? As you state, Mother? your attorney states. Uh, you know, yeah. she's lost a lot of weight. Uh, she looks, she looks sick, like strung out sick. Like you, you see the videos like of people on drugs, you know, like heavy, heavy drug usage. Her face is kind of pitted okay. in. You know, she just, okay. I can't get in contact with uh, her on a regular And what basis. is, what is, what is CPS telling you right now? So they advised you don't let the kids go back and have they, right. have they concluded their investigation or to your understanding they just can't, she's not talking to them. She's not willing to get together with them. No, CPS told me that they've heard her in the home. They, they assume it's her trying to dodge them. But my daughter's actually at a care house interview today. 
for a forensic interview for everything that's been going on with the for the gentleman on the for the gentleman on the couch. Is that what that's about? Yeah, and I think also the physical uh, when my daughter got struck. As oh, well. the physical. Okay, okay. Allegedly got struck, and in that, it in, in kids that your their mother, the defendant, and her boyfriend are in a physical altercation. Your daughter tried to intervene. Um, he hit her in the head. She then threw a bloom and and hit him, causing him to bleed. Um, and did I get any of that wrong in the motion no. as well? I just want to set forth a few facts as set forth on the record. Right. And and so, since, he, and so he, the he last month. Then, okay, go ahead, counsel. He, he, he was also then uh, removed by several under, other individuals from the trailer as a result of him striking the daughter. And then she let him back in only hours later. Let me ask, do the kids have cell phones or they do they talk to their mom? Because you reached out to try to talk to them or text them if they have cell phones or they don't have cell phones. What's my son? My son has a cell community? phone, but she has not reached out to him since the same day that I told her she wasn't getting the kids because all she texted him was, okay. uh, your dad said, you can't have the, I can't have you guys. What's going on? And I said, you know, so she has. So she so to your knowledge, your 16 year old son has had no contact with his mom and she's not reached out to him for the last month. Correct. And she has not talked to you in the last month and said, hey, I want to see the kids, miss them. What's going on with the kids? The daughter, the children haven't said mom's reached out. Your son, no, seems to be no attempt absolutely there either. Nothing since, absolutely nothing since the day I told her I was holding on the kids. What, what are the kids expressing about wanting to talk or see mom? What are their thoughts about that um, or your thoughts? They want things to get better at their mom's house before they go back. Um, my oldest son keeps asking when he can see her. And I said, you know, I tell him, I don't know yet. I yeah. said, we got some things going on. I'll let you know, you know, as I find out. You know, it but it's not. That, that, that the party's son is, is about to age out as well. He he will be 18 soon. No. Yeah. Well, he's, is he 16 or 17 right now? 16. Yeah, he's got, a, he's a little bit left. All right. So your issues with the house, but the kids love their mom. And even if she has substance abuse issues, she, you believe she loves the kids and they're not she, feeling I think she, resistant you know, to see her. Well, see, here's the thing. The kids care for their mom. Um, but what I've seen over the last couple of years, it's more of, she's more worried about herself than even the children when okay. it comes to things. And, and I'll be honest, where I'm getting to now is temporary parenting time. I'm going to continue the placement based on her failure to appear and uh, the testimony presented to the court and the additional things that set forth in the motion, which I don't feel necessarily to totally review on the record. I think we've got to the major points and the gist of what's going on here. But the question is temporary parenting time. Are you okay with her having some limited time outside of her home with the children or I can leave it for per mutual, uh, reasonable by mutual agreement? Um, it I sounds like she would your son, you don't, go ahead. I, I think she would need to to prove some form of sobriety prior to any parenting time, even if it was supervised. I, 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 there's significant concern about how she's going to behave and what? interact with the children. Well, super, well, supervision. Well, unless she's acting outrageous, and I haven't heard that. I heard she's being cavalier, letting strangers in the house. I haven't heard she's abused the children. Um, she is very super, manipulative super, towards the super, children. Super, super, supervision is what happens when you have a drug addiction problem. If she's not violent, she's not threatening them. She's not, you know, then I'm not a big, a big advocate of total suspension as a form of punishment for being an addict or alcoholic, unless your behavior is to the nature that you shouldn't have any, you know, contact at all, because there are negative contacts, issues for the children to have a parent cut off too. Is there anyone who would supervise parenting time between her and the kids that you can think of? Say maybe my father. And how does she get along with him? Can he stay, keep it, can he be respectful and not say anything or say um get hot or insulting or no, my dad's not a hothead. Um and they've had a decent relationship, you know what I'm saying? They've never had issues, but Okay. And what's your dad's name? Time be? What's up, Judge? What's where, where, where were you? Where are you recommending? Well, I'm asking. Well, Mr. Well, Mr. Keziaka can tell me how he would think that worked. I could say reasonable parenting time to be supervised by plaintiff's father, another mutually agreed upon third party. If parties cannot agree as to a time and uh, in duration, either one of them may file a motion. So it really, I'm going to be honest, it leaves it in your hands. But the court's going to hope that 
there'll be some effort to make it happen. And you don't care if she contacts your son on his cell, right? That's no. fine. Yeah. Okay. What about telephone calls with your daughter? She's, if you can monitor, and you can, and at this point, you can. Yeah, she's a little frazzled. You're not going to get in trouble. Still, yeah, she's still okay. really frazzled. All right. All right. All right. So I'm going to put that one based on the testimony presented. The play, uh, placement of the party's minor children shall remain with plaintiff father pending further order of the court. Uh, two. Defendant is awarded temporary uh, parenting time. Who? Kaziaka. She's on the phone. Uh, allegedly, uh, Ms. Kaziaka has just called my office. Do you want to give her the, the Zoom information? Can your staff do that? No, I'm here. Come on down. Here, All right. We'll see if she shows up. She's We're half an hour in and I have other motions. So um, it's going to have to be quick here. <laughs> Judge, the one thing we did not touch on is that if the placement is going to remain, that his his child support obligation should be suspended. We'll suspend it. Two, plaintiff child support obligation is suspended effective August 14th, 2023. August 14th. August 14th today. Would it, would it be the date of filing, Judge? Uh, yeah, we can do that. What day, what day was that? August, uh, July 31st. She's allegedly logging on now. Okay. Have you guys ever had a history of domestic violence, sir, between you and Ms. Kaziaka? No, not between me and her. She tried to bring it up in okay. court a while ago and said that her, we her prior either. boyfriend. Her prior boyfriend. Well, no, not between. I'm talking between you. I'm talking between you. No, two we've never actually. I'm, no, never actually. Well, I'm deciding if, them. well, I'm trying to decide if facilitation or mediation is beneficial is what, I, what I'm getting to here gotcha. with my custody department. But I can't order that if there's been any allegations or past history of domestic violence. And I need to do my next motion sitting here waiting. So I hope she shows up shortly here. If not, I'm going to, I'm going to proceed with my next hearing. And just for the record, Judge, we've heard nothing from her until two seconds ago. I mean, there was no response, no contact okay. to my office, nothing. Well, she doesn't appear shortly. I'm going to continue. She'll have to object to my order because uh, we're 35 minutes in and I have several motions today and my next one is waiting here. People need to appear timely for their hearings. All right, so I'm going to continue with my recommendation. Should she not appear here uh, shortly? I'm going to just put add to one. Uh, plaintiff testified the children have been in his care since mid-July 2023. And to further testify, defendant has not attempted to contact he or the party's minor children since that date. All right, so I'm gonna continue placement. I'm, gonna, I just, I'm just reiterating what, what I'm saying. And then two, a defendant should be awarded all right. Is it the iPhone? Figure in. Good morning. This is referee Brian Nicholas from the Combe County Family Court. And ma'am, your name for the record? All right. Uh, good morning, ma'am. Uh, please realize um, this is a uh, remote hearing, but even though it's remote, it's a hearing even though uh, as if you were present in the courtroom. This is a legal proceeding. Do you have any questions regarding that, ma'am? No, Your Honor. 
All right. And ma'am, do you know that this was scheduled for nine o'clock and we're now at approximately 940? So you're 40 minutes late here for this hearing. Correct. And that's my apologies, Your Honor. I was on the phone with the uh, main branch of the friend of the court trying to get the hearing info and I was getting redirected and they couldn't. Do you, do, do, do you can you tell me your phone number? Because we left you a message uh, last week, my staff, with all of the information and sent you an email. Um, What's I your phone number? Um, it's phone number that we have that we left the message for with the information regarding the hearing today. Well, I was Do you got another? Okay, was when did you come back from out of town? A, um, a couple of days ago, I had actually had three deaths in the family. Um, a friend of mine. And who? Okay. Um, and who I, all died? Who passed away? I'm sorry. Um, a good friend of mine, um, my ex-sister-in-law, which would be my ex-husband's brother's um baby mother and then my uncle okay all right so ma'am uh i've been speaking to mr keziaka and his attorney um did okay. you receive a copy of the motion and the allegations that were made in that motion have you received a copy of that motion yes, from mr keziaka have you had an yes. opportunity to read through that uh yes all right and just so you know, I'm going to go fairly quickly because I have other hearings waiting and um, and therefore timeliness is important when you have a motion. So um, I, I, but I'm going to take for granted that you had connection issues and didn't have the information, even though um, our records show we sent it to you. Um, so I'm going to review those allegations and in, in the conversation I've had with Mr. Kaziak and his attorney, and they're going to correct me if I get anything wrong about that conversation. So it's alleged that in mid-July. There was a physical altercation between you and your boyfriend. Your daughter got involved. He struck your, your daughter. She threw a broom and hit him in the head, uh, causing bleeding that other uh, individuals in the in the home had to remove him because of the volatility of that incident. Um, that on more than one occasion, uh, different male guests in your home have been in different states of undress from the waist down and another one pleasuring himself in the living room. Um, in the presence of your 11-year-old daughter, um, that the house is unsanitary, has animal feces, um, is filled, that random people come to the home. Um, when Mr. Keziaka brought your daughter back to retrieve an eye patch, he came in and there was a couple in your bedroom, in your bed, in states of undress, um, that CPS um, advised him to not return the children to your care that they've come to your home on numerous occasions and they believe you're inside and refusing to open the door to talk to them. Um, and he also asserts that he has not heard from you nor have the children heard from you for the last month since um, he has not returned them. So this is your opportunity to respond to all those allegations and what you'd like to see happen with the placement of the children or their custody. Okay, Your Honor. Um, I um, would never let somebody be undressed in any manner from the waist down around my 11 year old daughter um nor any well i think well i think the kids. issue is i think the issue is that you not purposely do that but you're not being diligent in my no. your home your Honor, do you think I that you so you, that. you you so you don't think that's not so when when he says your daughter walked out and a man was pleasuring himself on this on the couch and another incident where a man was walking around with nothing on from the waist down Mr. Kaziak is just making all that up to come to court and, um, no. and cause problems. I can justify on that. Um, I do have a roommate and he was sleeping and I was actually there the night my daughter mentioned this incident um, because we were leaving to go, I believe, get groceries or something. He was sleeping and I think it was about 839 and I said, we'll go grab, you know, some ice cream snacks, things like that. And he was almost like in a stance, like we're sometimes gentlemen, like Al Bundy, like sleeping. He would never do any type of sexual pleasuring around a child. I've been friends with him for I many think, years. I think, these are two, I think these are two different individuals we're talking about. Mr. Kaziak, you want to add in there? You're talk, this is a different, it's, it's, no, it's, it's, it's gentleman it's from the, the waist individual. down is a different. It's the same it's person. The same oh, it is the same? Yeah. The what's the name of that individual? The uh, Dale Von York's. Correct. Okay. So, ma'am, did he get up naked from the waist down? 
No, he has accidentally never, I, exposed I've, himself. No, absolutely not. I've been friends with him for many years, and I've never even seen him undressed in a uh, manner that made me in any way uncomfortable. He's a very good so who's so so who's not telling the truth, Mr. Keziaka or your daughter? I think that your honor, um, in my opinion, that it is a misunderstanding and miscommunication and maybe possibly just drawn out and exaggerated in a sense, um, not having, um, I'm trying to put it in the words, um, substantial like proof that something like that happened. I wouldn't, I would not be friends with somebody who I would have a concern about. So, something well, that so, so if he accidentally got up and your daughter saw him in underwear and he wasn't totally undressed, what about pleasuring himself on the sofa and in, in front of her? Um, absolutely not. Like I said, your honor, I have. How are you sure? So that means either Ms. Keziaka, Mr. Keziaka made this up or your daughter made it up. Who, who are you alleging made it up? Um, I don't have a definite answer for that, but I do know that I um, definitely keep a good observation of my household and what is deemed appropriate around my children. I love my children. Who all lives, who, who all, who all lives in your home? Um, I live in my home with me and my children and my roommate, Dale Van York. And I did also have mm -hmm. company come in due to the loss in our family. To help so, me so do you have a boy? Do you have a boyfriend living there as well? Uh, no, I do not. Is it? What about the allegation? Okay. What about the allegation uh, of the physical fight where people restrained your boyfriend and your daughter got involved and he hit your uh, daughter and she threw and hit him with a broom? Okay, I can also explain on that, Your Honor. My daughter um, is per se not to make light of it a little bit of a tomboy. <laughs> Um, she grew up with two older brothers, and she loves to kind of course around, rough play, you know, um, be silly. And what happens usually, in, in even with her brothers, somebody always gets bumped or hurt or fall, you know. And um, mm -hmm. never would I ever allow somebody to come at her in a manner that would, it, it, you know, harm her. Because I give birth to her, and I would okay. protect her. So what happened to your boyfriend? How long have you been broken up? When did he, he depart the residence? Um, I would say within the last week or two. Okay. Um, and so do you, do, you, do you know that Mr. Keziaka came back to the house to retrieve stuff from your daughter and you were sleeping the whole time and never woke up the whole time they were there? Um, my kids are okay for a small amount of time if I need to nap. I am a busy mother, you know, always having a what lot. Do you do? What, do you do for, what do you do? What do you? What do you? What do you do for work? Um, I do like DoorDash. I I help out. I do house cleaning. Okay. I help take care of my father who had a stroke and he's like basically almost blind. So, Mr. Kaziaka, when was the date that you took your daughter back home and Miss Kaziaka was sleeping and the film was made? Seventeenth, I want to say, of July. Yeah. And were you? Did you enter the home with your daughter to help her, or she took oh, no. that? No, no. It, the the video was from two weeks prior. And who made the video? Parenting time exchange. Yeah, that was during a parenting no. time exchange. The incident. When okay, came so back from, so you came at a parenting time exchange, and she was sleeping in the house, and you entered, and she didn't wake up the whole time. Correct. And guys, I haven't, by the way, I haven't watched the video. I generally do not watch proposed evidence until proper foundations laid and it's been reviewed. And if you've also sent a copy of that video to the party, otherwise, just so you know, I've not watched it. So I'm describing what you've needed, but I have not watched that video. Um, and so, sir, you, sir, you came in, you took the video and mom was sleeping the whole time in the bedroom. Correct. Got it, okay. And did, and, okay. Um, may I ask who let him in, and is that um, something that is a usable in court um, as far as, like, um, for my privacy act, for somebody to come in a video? I, you I, so just so you guys know, I'm, I'm the court. I respond to evidence. I don't, answer, I don't give legal advice. 
okay. um, as to what that is. But I take it your adult, well, not adult, your your son who's 16 and your daughter 11, they let that in. They let the dad in. Have you had a history of letting him in the house? Do you have an open uh, relationship good enough that the, he comes over with the kids and well, you I guys enter in each house. other's homes or no? I don't go in his okay. house. He does it. Just so for the record, Mr. Kaziaka, what is just for the for the record, Your Honor? He's standing in the doorway. His son let him in. He's standing in the doorway. Okay. He's not roaming around the trailer. Okay. He's at the entry. Okay, I got gotcha. you. Well, thanks for clarifying, So, Mr. Kaziaka. What is the name of the uh, CPS worker that's assigned to this case? Uh, right now, uh, it is. Lauren Garcia. Do you have a phone number for Laura Gar Lauren Garcia? I do. Five, can eight, I have six. it, please, so I can provide it? Five, Your eight, Honor, six. also, when I Two, have I'm talking, the info. Just a second. I'm talking. When I talk and ask a question, you'll get an opportunity, but don't start talking over other people. And this goes for everybody. This goes for counsel, Mr. Kaziaka. Everybody in court wants to get everything out, but you got to take your turn. So let him just right. finish this phone number and then I'll get to your question. Go ahead, Mr. Kaziaka. Ms. Kaziaka, can I, if I put this in the order, I can count on you contacting the CPS worker and arranging a time for her to come visit you and talk to you? Absolutely. I um, asked Jason, um, via text message, and um, when I was supposed to get my kids on my parenting time, and he said that he did not have any info on a worker nor any phone numbers for me to be able to contact them. I did not have. Well, them did you time. call? Did you did you call Child Protective Services and say, I "Understand, there's an investigation open. Who's assigned to it, and what have you advised my my children's father?" Says he's been advised not to let me see them. Have, did you call anyone at Child Protective Services? I have no, because I had no idea of who my worker was or what. Have you attempted? Okay. Well, no, you call and say, this is my name. If you have an open case, it'll be under your name. Um, but I'll, but okay, okay. So what is your response? So Mr. Keziaka says you have not attempted to talk to him or the children for a month. Is that true? Um, well, it was under my understanding that he said I was legally not allowed to um, basically interact with my children. And he's done this before. And last time the judge said oh, he had no okay. right to take my kids from me. Did, did you? Okay. So, okay. Just a second. So if you've been through this in the court before, you know, you have a parenting time enforcement officer. Are you aware of that? A parenting time enforcement attorney at the front of the court? Um, vaguely, your honor. Um, but I don't know what okay. the um, conditions of that would be. The thing is, you never called anyone to say, hey, my husband's keeping, my ex is keeping my children from me and not let me see them. Did you call anyone and make a complaint at, no, at the front of the court to anyone claiming he's not giving you the kids back? No, um, unfortunately, I didn't, Your Honor, because I was un, you know, educated as to what the protocol should be like that that would have been the right thing to do. But 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 didn't you but didn't you previously litigate custody before the court and you just indicated you've been through this before and we're in front of yeah, Judge Witowski um, and therefore well, I would have thought you would know how it works, right? Last time I went through this, I also was able to afford an attorney. But okay. due to the burials and I lost my mom, my brother, I lost my dad in November. I've been doing everything on my own. I'm treading water, just trying to make ends meet. And um, so let, I'm going to ask, a, so I, I'm going to ask a very blunt question. This is based on the allegations before the court. If I ordered both you and Mr. Kaziak, I'll order him too, to go get a nine panel drug test immediately. What's that going to tell me? Am I, am I is it going to come back positive for anything or no? Um, I have proven my in a, my sobriety in a hair follicle screening already when? in the last when the last when? time we went um when was that a, two years ago yeah it's just I, I i feel like how many times do i have to prove myself without feeling well, like I'm Ms. Being so so mr kaziak and his attorney are going to correct me if i'm wrong but before you appeared on the record 40 minutes late 
they indicated, he said he's familiar with how you appear when you're under the influence. And he said that to him, your appearance is indicative to how in the past you look when you're using. Oh, okay. Well, your honor, he also demeans me to my children constantly. And like when I go to pick them up, he will tell me either I look fat or I look too skinny or he's constantly trying to break me down emotionally and mentally. Yeah. And through all the years of abuse he put me through, I have a lot of trauma from that. So I'm very timid. Your um, Honor, this, man, this, is a, this is deflection at its okay. finest and she didn't even answer okay, your question. Okay, stop. What okay, show? stop. I, can, I don't need her to be corrected, counsel. I've, I've done this a long time. So ma'am, have you tried to contact your 16 year old son on his cell phone in the last month? He did text me happy birthday. And I did text him and ask him kind of, you know, like I was really sad what was going on. And he he stated that he did not really want to talk too much about it because he didn't want to get in trouble okay. with his father. But but have you but why not call him and talk to him verbally or text him? Why? Why not? Um, He's a 16 year old. Why not contact him? Because um, throughout our marriage and everything, my ex-husband, he was very controlling it was it's always been his way or no way i give him leeway if he needs an extra day like the day i was supposed to pick up my kids i gave him an extra day to take them to the fireworks with no problem and then the day i go to pick them up he says oh well a case was open yesterday well why wouldn't you inform me so it's it's almost like he's just always okay. trying to reach in a, a basket of you know a hat of rabbits trying to pull something out mm -hmm. when i'm trying i'm doing my best and okay um i'm always trying to co-parent at a civil manner with him to save you in the court time and us time um i'm doing my best he's doing his best and a lot of things i'm sure you, you're aware of can be handled without going through all this okay i will i, I will and admit, so so let I me let me let me do this let me confirm so we have you've confirmed your phone number you want to confirm yeah. an email address for us and your current address so we make sure you have all the information to get contacted by the court? Yes, sir. Okay, so guys, if you wonder who I'm talking to and you have multiple screens, you'll see the name Melanie. That's my secretary and court recorder. She did confirm that's the email she has and your phone number. You want to confirm your address, ma'am? What city do you live in? It's uh, Sterling Heights. I may be in the process of moving soon, though, to help be closer to my family. Okay. Um, okay. So I'm looking to sell my modular home and move forward in life. It's just, okay. as a single mother and with the economy, it's hard. And i just asking that you see that um, some of us struggle at times from time to time in life, you know, especially trying to make ends meet and bills and especially when you're a separated family. Okay. And sir, what city do you live in? How far are you guys apart from each other residence wise? Right now it's about 10, 15 minute drive. Okay. Drive, so you guys are, are close. I do most of the driving, your honor. I drive, I'll drive my son to school, come back home on her my days. daughter to get a little more, more rest. And then I got to drive her to school and come back. And then in the, in the afternoon I have to do Two more rounds, so it's eight trips. Your Honor, the children are enrolled in Rochester School District, which is where my client lives. Uh, and and uh, just for clarification, I want to make sure her email was Amanda K zero eight one three at gmail dot com. Yeah. Okay. All right, and Mr. Kaziak, anything you want to add to this dialogue after uh, hearing um, Ms. Kaziak's position and response to everything? Just just the fact that um her birthday was yesterday so my son messaged her yesterday for her birthday so it's it's been a month since they've talked and then um she does do more driving but those are on her parenting days you know it's because she'll drive back and forth to her house twice to drop them off at school and then go back home and then take the other one to drop the other one off you know so it's and jason can i also bring it to the attention of the judge that um when we went through this last time you would not allow me to speak with the children. Your Honor, I, uh, they don't need to dialogue with each other. I, just for the record, again, you asked her a specific question. If she were to submit to a seven panel drug screen, what would show up? And she has not provided you an answer to that question. 
Well, she said she took a test before, but ma'am, do you want to two answer years, that? Will it be clean? Because I'm two years I'm, ago. I'm, guys, stop. I yeah, I can I can count counsel with all the respect. I feel uh, your um, honor is humiliating. And it's the greatest. Well, he, well he's well, he's well, guess what? He's gonna do it too. But when when parties tell me that the other party's under the influence and they witness their appearance, then if it comes back clean for both of you, then you can say, see, he's wrong and he's not being honest to the court. And that can support you, but you guys are both going to submit to your nine panel your analysis truck test today at a jams location with the results being provided to each other. I'm going to add a protective order that guys you don't post this stuff on social media you don't give it to family and friends. You are both parents of these children if either one of you is using that doesn't change the fact that children love their parents and you love them so i'm going to put add in here. Uh, that the both parties shall submit to nine panel your analysis drug tests at a jams location uh, within the next 12 hours with the results being provided uh, ma'am to uh, plaintiff's counsel and sir your results you can give them to counsel and he can send them to Ms. Kaziaka. Your honor would you would just so you just just stop just so you guys know um, any dilution element is viewed as a positive positive. and ma'am you had a question. Yeah, I am um, in the process of scheduling funeral arrangements today for my aunt, and I'm watching over my nephew because he's very young and he lost his dad, and I'm just wondering if we can do that for tomorrow. Okay, so with all due respect, so you just were out of town for three funerals, and now you have a fourth funeral all within the last oh. 30 days? I had four deaths in the last, yeah, absolutely. What is the cause of these passing away if i may ask All these um, deaths. Uh, my friend he was found um assaulted intimately intimately sexually um my uncle passed away of natural cause i believe um due to mm -hmm. his diabetes and um my sister-in-law uh jason hasn't told me what she passed from that was uh, uh a month and a half ago and um, my aunt, aunt passed away of basic old age. I'm sorry, I didn't, I didn't hear. Just basic like your aunt. old age, basically. Okay, All right. I'm sorry but for your losses. I, I will say within 24 hours instead of 12, instead of 11, tomorrow morning. Your honor, wouldn't, hair yeah, follicle yeah, show, wouldn't hair follicle be better than your analysis? Well, well guys, your analysis is 20, 20 to 30 bucks and hair follicle is probably far more expensive. So right now I'm going to do your analysis. Your analysis uh, would not go back as far. Your, your honor, I, 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 I care about it right now. Follicle. Guys, I stop. I, I've made, guys, stop. Ma'am, two years ago is, doesn't matter. I know, you can be clean and so, like and with all due respect, stop, with all due respect. Either one of you, anybody, anyone who in the past has had a history of use of abusing alcohol or drugs can be clean and sober for a while, and then they can fall off the wagon, unfortunately. So two years is too long ago. Uh, this will assist you just as much as if, if you come up clean, then you can say, listen, I'm clean. But based on the testimony presented and what's going on, I think it's it's uh, both parties should submit. Guys, they're 20 bucks nowadays 20 30 bucks for your analysis and there's jams locations all over the place so google jams locations and they're all over the metro area that's why i used it um and there's a whole bunch of them um, okay. and they're also used by some of the district courts as well all right so i'm going to make a recommendation guys i have other motions i gotta get moving here we've now used up an hour um and i have other motions that i gotta get to so my recommendation is as follows um, one, based on the testimony presented, the children should remain. And ma'am, you know that the judge entered an ex party order on August 1st, placing the children of Mr. Kaziaka. Are you aware of that? Yeah, I Did read you get a copy of that. Work. I just didn't okay. understand why, why, like. Well, but because there's a lot of serious allegations going on here, one of which is that your significant other hit your daughter, and that there's men in undress in front of an 11 year old girl. There are serious allegations here. And did he also bring up the that he also had hit my daughter and she told her school right before she got out of school? How long ago was that, do you allege? Um, a couple of months ago. Um, we have Dr. So Mr. Kaziaki, you want to I can respond. Mr. Kaziaki, you want to respond? 
The minor child had a bruise on her leg from falling near a pool, and Ms. Kaziaka told Mr. Kaziaka, and I believe we even have verification, that she was going to try to use this against him if he were to bring her back to court and allege that's abuse a falsely. That's a different incident. Okay, so guys, guys, guess what? I'm going to send you guys for investigation and recommendation, and you guys can tell the investigator all the above, all my social worker at the court, all of these things, and they will um, investigate them. I'm going to include that investigation shall include a uh, home visit of a uh, defendant's residence. All right. So, um, again, one, based on the pre, uh, the minor children should be uh, remain temporarily placed in the care of plaintiff father. Two, defendant mother is awarded. Ma'am, if someone is going to supervise your parenting time, is there anyone that you would uh, recommend or propose to Mr. Keziaka be the supervisor? My father. And sir, your response to that? Mm, I don't talk with her father and I haven't for a very long time. So I would, well, the, I don't think I'd be comfortable with it because he wouldn't be for He's a very respectable Catholic man. Or the supervision ma'am do you know by... mr kaziaka's father yeah absolutely and i would trust him as i How do you get along hope with that he would, he would trust my father he's my father has always been very good to jason and mr kaziak any response to that that her dad's been a responsible guy that you've never had an issue with judge Judge, she just indicated she respects and trusts mr kaziaka's father there's no reason he can't I do heard, it. guys i heard I, deserve I, I don't disagree with that. I'm just looking for alternatives. I don't. I haven't Mr. talked to him in years. And when I tried to reach out to him last time when we were going through something similar, I got no back feed from him at all. So it wasn't like, because I was trying uh, to work with her to get things solved for the children last time too. So, but I- let, was me, no let me ask this. Do either one of you, do either one of you practice religion or go to church on Sundays? Yes, sir. You both, okay. So you're in church at noon because I was going to give you parenting time on Sundays from noon to five or four. Um, for me. Yep. Um, I miss my children very much, so I'm sure that I can um, discuss that with the Lord above. That I really would like to see my children okay. a week of prayer. Okay. All right. All right. So on a temporary basis, defendant should be awarded parenting time on Sundays from noon. Uh, to 5 p.m. to be supervised by plaintiff's father or another mutually agreed upon third party. By whose father, Your Honor? His father. And what's your father's first name, Mr. Kaziaka? Remind me. Dwayne. Dwayne. Plaintiff's Dwayne. father, Dwayne. Dwayne. All right. The matters of custody and parenting time are referred to the front of the court for investigation and recommendation to include a home visit. Following the issuance of a custody and parenting time recommendation in this matter, uh, the matters of custody, parenting time, and child support should be referred to the front of the court for referee evidentiary hearing. And child support should be suspended pending further order of the court. So, guys, I parent? am a referee, not a judge. So, well, they, they'll work it out with the supervisor. Can I have so one guys, more question, Donna? Yeah. Um, would it be possible to um, rotate the parenting time so in the comfort of his, with his family and my family, so my kids can see my father? Well, you guys, you guys talk about mutual agreed upon third parties if you don't agree. So, guys, I'm a referee, not a judge. You right. both have 21 days to object to my decision. These are very contested issues and subjective to mine and the judge's views. We do not always agree. The judge is the boss of the case. She is the final say. So if either one of you do not like this order, I'm going to email it to you with the objection procedure. I suggest you object within the next 21 days and get a hearing before the Honorable Terry Lynn Dennings and the judge's decision trumps mine. Her, she can overrule me and her decision is the final say. So if either one of you does not like all or part of my recommendation, you are welcome to object. It is your right under the law. I don't get mad. She doesn't get mad. And the judge will decide if she wants to uphold my order or change all or part of it. And when you get that order in the objection procedure, if you have any confusion on how to object procedurally, you are welcome to call my staff and they will help you through the objection procedure. 
They can't tell you what to write on the order. They can't give legal advice, but they can help you procedurally to make sure that your objection gets filed and a hearing gets scheduled before the judge. So you will get those. And is everybody okay getting the, this stuff via email? Yes. Ma'am, are you okay with email? Yes, Your Honor. You'll get it right away this morning. All right. I almost also, as I indicated, ordering within 24 hours, you both submit to nine panel urinalysis drug tests at your own expense with these results being exchanged to each other. You may not post these results on social media or provide them to individuals unassociated with this litigation. Okay. All right, guys, you have 21 days to uh, object. That's going to um, conclude this hearing. Please have a good day. Stay healthy and safe. And if you don't get this order by the end of the day, call my office and make sure um, you got it. Make sure to check your junk and spam mail as well, because sometimes it goes there. So before you call, check your junk and spam if you still don't see it. Okay. Okay. And am I able to call him All to right. speak with the children in between, Your Honor? I would say talk to him. You guys, if you guys want to talk, there's no bar to it, but be respectful. And he's saying your son has a, a phone. You're, you, there's no restrictions on con contacting your son. Response. Okay, well, well, talk to Mr. You guys are parents. I'm not here to micromanage everything you do, but you can talk to Mr. Keziak and you guys can talk about talking to your daughter or uh, I mean, but uh, your son. Right you can call your son or text him. Talking to them or no? Right now, I'd say try to work it out or file objections. I'm not going to have it right now with what's going on. There's a CPS okay. investigation. Okay. Whoops, I'm going to, you know what? I'm going to add in here this. I forgot. Plaintiff uh, reported that she will be contacting Lauren Garcia, the CPS. Change an appointment at which Ms. Garcia may interview her in the context of the current CPS investigation. So ma'am, you need to get a hold of her and say- It was 212. It's gonna be in the order. It'll be in the order. It's gonna be in the okay. order. All right. All right. With that, guys, that's going to conclude this hearing. Have a good day. And you guys Thank are all you. set. All right. Thank you, Judge.